So today we're gonna take a look at the first problem of project Euler, which is pretty easy in my opinion. If we list all the natural numbers below 10 that are multiples of 3 and 5, we get 3, 5, 6, and 9. The sum of these multiples is 23. Find the sum of all the multiples of 3 or 5 below 1000. So let's start with Java. I find this to be a really standard solution for Java as we are gonna solve this in a very imperative way and for doing that we just declare our main class and our main function then we instantiate the first variable which is an integer equal to zero after that we loop over all the numbers between 3 and 1000 and I'm starting from from 3 uh, because you know there are no numbers which are uh, both less than 3 and multiples of 3 so it makes no sense for me to start from 0 in that case after that we're gonna check for every single number if the current number modulo 3 or modulo 5 is equal to 0 if that is the case that means that the number is multiple of 3 or 5 or both so we are gonna sum this number with the result variable. Then we're gonna pr print the result. So here's the solution. Um, pretty easy, as I said. Now let's move on to the Rust counterpart. Also, the Rust solution seems really easy to me, which is fine. The main difference is that we don't need to specify types and we don't have classes, <laughs> which is also fine for me, not a problem. Um, talking about types, we don't need to say that result is of type integer. Um, the compile will infer this type at compile time. But we need to specify that this variable will be mutable, which is pretty strange to me because you know uh, there are many programming languages where variables are mutable by default but in Rust variables are immutable which is great yeah why not immutability has many benefits um, then we just want to iterate between all the numbers in a given list so um, in a list uh, between 3 and 1000 and the rest of the solution it's just very similar to the java one so uh, let's run it here's the solution incredibly fast compile time okay now it's time for one of my favorite solutions for this video and we are gonna solve this uh, problem without using variables without using iterations and without using mutability at all and we are going to do that in Haskell. Um, yeah, when I said that we are not going to use variable, I was cheating. Just a, li a little bit. Because, yeah, Haskell doesn't have variables. It only has functions. So when we instantiate um, something that looks like a variable, like this limit, actually, we are going to instantiate a function that returns a value. We don't have variables in Haskell. Yeah, by the way, uh, let's start reading this solution. We are gonna start by reading the solution function and we'll do that reading from right to left, which is pretty common in Haskell actually. As you can see, um, we are gonna create two different lists and we are gonna pass them to the union function. At this point you may be wondering where are the commas, where are the parentheses between those two arguments? Yeah, you don't need them in Haskell. We are going to create those two lists um, by simply uh, starting from 3, then adding 6 as a step, and then continuing until the limit. So basically the compiler will start with 3, will compute the difference between 6 and 3, and we'll take this result as the step for creating a list. 
So we will start from 3, we'll go on with 6, and the next number will be 9, then 12, and so on, until we reach the limit. Same thing occurs for the multiples of 5. After we do that, we will merge those two lists together using the union function. The union function will merge two lists and will exclude all the duplicates. Yeah, there are numbers that may appear in both lists and union will remove them. After we do that, we will sum everything together using the built-in sum function, which will take the list as input and produces um, a single integer value as an output. Then we just print the solution. So here is the Haskell function. Now let's move on to the F-sharp one. Um, as you can see, the F-sharp solution it's a hybrid, I would say, uh, between Haskell and Rust. Uh, we do create a list just like we do in Rust, basically. As you can see, we take, a uh, we take all the numbers between 3 and our limit. Then we pass this list to the list.filter function, and we do that using the pipeline operator, which acts like the um, bash pipe operator. And basically, uh, this will be the first argument for this function. The second argument will be an anonymous function, which acts just like the Rust one, or the Java one, of course. It does the exact same thing, but the concept is that we create a new list, we will filter out everything that does not match that condition, and then we take this result and we are going to pipe it to the list.sum, which works just like the Haskell sum function. So here is the F-sharp solution. Now let's move on to the last solution for that video. As you can see, um, we're solving that problem using JavaScript and using the ES6 specification um, in a functional way. And of course, JavaScript does not force you uh, to use that particular paradigm for solving that kind of problems but I wanted to show you a different way from a, a standard approach to this problem in JavaScript. And I think that this is comparable to the F-sharp one, even if it's a bit more complex. So yeah, as you can see, we start by creating a new array of 999 elements. Every single element at this point will be undefined. We can fix that by mapping over every single element and we will take the index of the element we are currently iterating over and we will return index plus one because we want to start with one. So basically the first index will be uh, zero and we will return one. The second index will be one and we will return 2, and so on. Then we are going to filter out everything that does not match that condition, just like we do in F sharp. Then we don't have a built in sum function, but we have reduce. Reduce is a higher order function in JavaScript that accepts an anonymous function and an initial value as arguments. So basically, um, we will take an accumulator value and we will sum the current number of our iteration to the accumulator starting from zero as an accumulator value. Then we are printing the solution. So here it is, our last solution for today.